The main point is not the challenges we face or even how many of them there are. The main point is that God has given us the amazing, awesome power to endure all of these things, all of the challenges that we face. And I believe God has given us more ability than we will ever need. God gave the Apostle Paul the ability to overcome. And Paul has passed that ability on to people like Timothy and Titus. In Galatians chapter 5 and in verse 1, Paul is trying to pass this on to the churches of Galatia. He says, for freedom, Christ has set us free. And stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again. To the yoke of slavery. Paul said God gave them freedom. And the ability to be free. Again in Paul's first letter to Timothy. In 1 Timothy chapter 6. And in verse 12. I want you to think about the albatross for a moment. In light of what Paul wrote to the Galatians. God created the albatross to be free, to soar for hours and miles above the ocean and above the seas. God created the Christian to be free of sin and to live a life above the dregs of this world. In 1 Timothy chapter 6 this time, and in verse 12, I want you to notice what is said here. Paul says to Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of eternal life, to which you were called, and about which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. He says, I charge you in the presence of God who gives life to all and of Christ Jesus who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made, a, made the good confession keep the commandment unstained and be free from reproach until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ which he will display at the proper time. He who is the blessed and only sovereign, King of kings and Lord of lords. <coughs> the albatross. I want to take a quick look at the providence that God has built in for the albatross. And I want you to think of how the providence of God mirrors this in our lives. Providence of God, Old Testament. Elijah, after making two meals, provi after two meals provided by God's angels, Elijah went in strength, quote, in strength of that meat, 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the mound of God. We can read about that in 1 Kings. What I want you to understand is God provides... God provides the sheath of tendons that lock the albatross wings when he flies. God provided Elijah the strength that he needed to make a 40-day and 40-night journey to get to the mountain of God. God reminded the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, this morning's Bible study, Verse 9, my grace is sufficient for thee. How is it possible that God can and does provide for us? I want you to look with me back in the Old Testament book of Zechariah for just a moment. The Old Testament book of Zechariah in chapter 4. If you'll bear with me, these Old Testament books kind of tend to stick together in my Bible because they're so small. 
But in Zechariah chapter 4 and in verse 6, Zechariah writes, Then the Lord said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Not by might, not by power, will we overcome the world, but by the Spirit of God. I want you to think about that. It's a segment, it's a small segment, and we would probably do well to go back in our own time and read the context. But I want you to think about this. Sometimes we place our trust in strength. We place our trust in power. Zechariah was told by God, no, you tell Zerubbabel by the Spirit. For time's sake, we won't look at the entire passage, but I did want to pull that verse out. Now, I want to also look at 1 Peter chapter 2. Back in our New Testaments in 1 Peter chapter 2, and in verse 9, 1 Peter 2 and verse 9 says this, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh that wage war against your soul. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good works and glorify God in the day of the patient. This morning, I want you to consider the albatross. God provides for the albatross. God provides for us. In every spiritual sense, God has put a provision in our lives so that we, like the albatross, might soar in the heavens. We may never understand everything God's done for us. But his love and his care is at work in our lives. We'll take out a song this morning.